Hi everybody, hope you are all fine. This is Atik. Welcome to our YouTube channel Engineering Drive. If we want to execute a part of Java program, no matter exception occurs or not, then we need to make use of a finally block. Okay, the concept of finally block, where when it should be used, and what happened if we use the finally block in case of two situations. One is when exception occurs. and one is when exception does not occur each and everything i am going to discuss in my today's class so dear students i have written one simple java program which is capable of throwing an exception okay now what is the use of finally block you can see here in this example program now in this example program on finally block i have taken the same example i want to divide the two numbers i want to divide a by b so what is the value of a 10 what is the value of b 2 10 by 2 in the c in the variable c we will get the result as 5 is it right so this code which can generate the exception i have kept in which block try block and i want to display this answer that is result is equal to i will get answer 5 what is the output now first case result is equal to 5 because there is no exception so this is the first case i am showing you without exception we will get the output result is equal to 5 result is equal to 5 no exception is there so as there is no exception control will not go to catch block so control will enter the uh, control will skip this catch block then control will enter into the finally block and what code i have written in finally what is the statement i have written compulsory so i will get compulsory okay so as there is now in this case one there is no exception in in this case as we have as we don't have any exception in the try block even though in this case we got the output as well as the contents of the finally block so in case of no exception finally block got executed now let me take the second case now so we got result and compulsory here second case in second case let me generate an exception in try block so when the exception will be arithmetic exception is generated in the try block instead of this b value as 2 here let me write this let me assign the value of b as 0 let me assign 0 to b now in this situation 10 by 0 which is a division by 0 error which is a runtime error which is a arithmetic exception so in this case what happened control directly it won't it won't go to this uh, system dot 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 println is it will go directly to the catch block and which exception is there in the catch arithmetic exception so this catch block will handle this exception and which message which message will get as the output to denominator should not be zero so this is second case in second case we will get the output instead of this result denominator denominator should not be zero now once the catch block has handled the exception immediately after the catch block finally block is there so control will enter into the finally block compulsory so you will get this message what you have written what is that compulsory will come so dear students you can see one thing here what is the use of finally block means no matter whether the exception has occurred or not finally block will be executed you can see here when the catch block will be executed catch block will be executed the control will enter into catch block only in one situation which situation when a runtime error occurs in a try block when an exception occurs in a try block then only catch block will be executed corresponding catch block will be executed otherwise catch block will not be executed whereas the use of finally block is no matter irrespective of whether the exception has occurred or not if we want to execute a certain piece of code in our java program then we need to put that code in the finally block so that it should be executed mandatory so dear students i believe that you got a clear idea about the use of finally block so with this concept we have completed all the concepts and topics related to exception handling so in my next classes of java programming i am going to start what is multi threading and how we can create a thread in a java program okay so that is multi threading is also a very very important topic of java 
So with this, let me close my today's session of video. See you soon, everybody. Take care. Allah Hafiz.